Hey folks, Ray from DCRamRecord.com here. Today I've got Garmin's newest action camera, the Verb Ultra 30. Um, now this camera just was announced this morning, but I've actually been using it now for a little bit of time and have uh, quite a bit of experience with it. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll start with a complete unboxing with a brand new fresh unit here. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of do some size comparisons and weight comparisons here with some existing units. Uh, but then more importantly, beyond just this one unboxing video, there's a ton of other videos I've uploaded today. Uh, you'll see them on that playlist up there. So that includes things like an overview of every menu on this thing, uh, how it works in cycling and just sort of general uh, pictures, all sorts of cool stuff. I got tons and tons of videos. So definitely check all those out for all the latest on how this camera works uh, from end to end. So with that, let's get this thing unboxed. Okay, to start here, we have this relatively small mini cigar size box. Um, and it's got uh, on the back a picture of the unit on the front, uh, or however you want to look at this, the back or the front. I guess this would be the front. So it's got a front picture of the unit. And then if we turn it around here, we've got what the back looks like. You'll notice it's got the screen. It's got kind of the six core features there. So the touch LCD, uh, the image stabilization up to 1440p. So it doesn't really work at 4K, but if you're doing like 1080p footage, you're good there. And then we have the waterproof though. So in the case itself, it's totally waterproofed. Voice control, this allows you to say, okay, Garmin, take a photo. Um, it's actually really cool. Uh, high sensitivity mic, super impressive. The Verb actually always had really good mic quality, better than the GoPros did. They never really got good credit for it. Uh, but this is even more impressive because it works inside the case. And then live streaming to YouTube, at least on iOS devices. Not sure if it's coming to Android, but iOS is there. So we'll go ahead and uh, crack this thing open. So inside we have the camera itself. Um, so you'll see that right here. So I'm gonna kind of put these things all up in a little bit of a lineup. Uh, and then we'll go and open this piece there. Next we have, it looks like the mounts. Then we've got a, a standard mini USB cable. So not micro USB, which is sort of an interesting choice. Uh, you know, it's the same as GoPro. They have a mini USB on the Hero 4 series, except for the Hero 4 session, which does go to micro USB. We then have a battery. Uh, this is a bit of a kind of dehumidifier pack, if you will, so it absorbs moisture that may get in the case somehow, uh, so it keeps your lens from fogging up. And then we've got some paper stuff. So I'm going to slide this again a little bit further out of the way here. There we go, close that up, put that off the side, and we have the manual. So we're going to kind of work our way backwards through all this stuff. Um, so first up is this manual stuff right here, this paper junk, so tossed out of the way. Um, it notes that you want to download the Verb Edit software. Um, it's actually a really good piece of Garmin software, probably one of the better pieces of software they've ever released. Uh, and it's really impressive. They've been doing updates to the software uh, virtually almost every month the last three years. Um, it's really good video editing software for kind of basic use. It's not your Final Cut Pro or your Premiere, um, but for everyone else, it's actually pretty darn solid. Um, it allows you to overlay data like gauge data and data metrics and stuff like that. We then have this um, important you know, safety manual dealio here. Uh, just tells you not to kill yourself taking videos. And then below that, it looks like we've got uh, a Garmin Verb sticker. So you can put that there. And then we have a quick start guide by the looks of things here. Uh, yep, so just a kind of an overview, set up a configuration of how to do this whole camera thing. Um, you know, pretty straightforward. It just tells you how to open up the doors and press the buttons. Um, and then it shows you some of the mounting options and how those different mounts work. So I'll fold this back up and get this out of the way and put this in our paper stack here. Next, we've got, as I mentioned earlier, this is the, uh, basically it'll keep moisture um, from fogging up your lens. So there's a bunch of packets in here uh, and you can see them. We've got two strips um, and then an indicator here as well. Uh, if it's working, you can see that. And then the silica gel that it tells you not to eat to keep this all protected. I would go ahead and leave this back in your package. Like right now down here in the cave, it's super humid. Um, so I'm gonna leave that in there so it doesn't get zapped right out of the begin, right out of the get go. We then have this mini USB charging and sync cable there. Um, so again, mini USB, not micro USB. Uh, so it's the same as you would have had on pre-existing GoPros. Then we have the battery. Um, now, this battery looks really darn similar to a GoPro battery. If I pop one out here, uh, so I can get one out of this case really easily. You may think they're the same. Uh, they look very similar, but they're not. Uh, you can see on a GoPro battery here, and this is just a, a rip off one because I buy them cheap that way. Um, it's got these straight corners. This is rounded edges there. Uh, so they do not fit, unfortunately. They're, they're very, very similar, but not exactly the same. This is 1250 milliamp hours. This is 1160. Um, some minor differences there, but I've tried. This will not go in that, and this won't go in that. So it's kind of sad. Um, anyways, oops, there we go. Next, we have our pile of mounts. 
So here we go, the bag amounts. Okay, so we have two different, um, so this Garmin technically uses a GoPro mounting style, you can see that there, um, but they also have their own style that kind of adapts a little bit better for just quickly popping things on and off. So the idea here that you can take this mount, uh, put it on something flat, and then you can go ahead and put this there and just simply take this and pop it and go with it. Um, once you do this a couple times, it makes it a little bit looser and makes it easier to pop on and off. Uh, honestly, for me, this just adds extra height stack or stack height, and I don't really want it. You can see this is the curved one there. This is the flat one. Uh, same, same, though. And then you have this, you know, fits in the same way as this one does. Um, so, again, depending on what kind of leverage you want, if you wanted to go... Uh, I guess mount it more like this, and then potentially put this on a wall, or again, there's lots of options here. Um, but nonetheless, you've got this kind of flat one. Um, you have this sort of angled one. You then have a direction changer. So a standard GoPro mount where if you wanted to pop it in this way, you know, now you can mount something uh, this way versus this way. Uh, really the same stuff you've seen from, from GoPro and others in the past. This is again, the same sort of thing, but just an extender and height here. Uh, you know, the general rule of thumb, by the way, on mounts is the more crap that you have between your camera and the thing that you've mounted it to, the less your image quality is. Uh, so when you use this kind of stuff, you know, it's going to reduce your image quality because of stability reasons. So just try to avoid that. Um, here is a hex wrench for really cranking things down. So this is one cool thing on the Garmin mounts that they do have this hex ability. So you just go in there and you can really get it nice and tight. You can do that like this by itself, but if you wanted to, to really go go for broke, you could do that. Uh, just don't actually break it. Last but not least, we have the camera itself. Um, so we got this protective plastic thing there. We don't need that. And then we'll pop open the door here. Uh, so this is this piece right there. So you just press down on this and then it pops out like that, and just kind of a locking mechanism. Very similar to the locking mechanism that you would have seen on the GoPro case, just sort of inverted, if you will, um, but kind of that same style design. And it's just a little more protected, like you wouldn't be able to accidentally do this. It, it'd be very, very difficult. Inside then, we have the camera itself. Um, so on the side here, we have our mini USB. Here we have a uh, micro HDMI port. I believe it's micro, yeah, it should be micro HDMI port. Um, and then on the side door here, this is how we get to the battery. So you pop this, oops, sorry, there, there we go. Um, and then inside is a battery, and it looks like uh, the Garmin folks sent me an extra battery, so normally uh, there's only one battery, but just as an FYI, it looks like they tossed an extra one in my box for whatever reason. And then you have a um, micro SD card that goes into that slot right there. Um, so again, the battery just simply pulls out. Uh, if I can get it out here, there we go, just like that, and slides in again. Um, on the top, you have these three buttons. Uh, so you have power, Wi-Fi, and then there's actually a button right there as well. This is the button for taking photos, and this is to switch it on and off to take uh, video. And you can see the second I did that, it automatically turned the camera on and is now likely recording me. Yep, you can see that right there recording me. Uh, looks like they also stuck a micro SD card in there, um, and we're, we're live right now. Um, and I can hit this button again, and now it turns it off and uh, it stops recording. So super simple. Um, now this is the waterproof case, just like a GoPro, this is not waterproof by itself. Um, it requires a waterproof case to be waterproof. Uh, what's cool about this case though, is that it is actually touchscreen happy. Um, so I'm gonna put this back inside again, and I'm gonna turn on the unit, and it may be asking me kind of like first run type stuff here because I haven't actually turned it on before. Uh, looks like we may have taken care of that. Now watch, I can actually hit this display. Um, so, oops, there we go. Um, so you have to swipe to unlock it. So I'll do that now, swipe to unlock it. And I'll go ahead now and use the display from within this hard plastic case. I mean, this is, oh, there we go. it's hard, right? It's, it's not nothing flexy like the GoPro one that I'll talk about in a second. Um, so it's pretty cool. Like it, it works really well. Um, underwater doesn't work. When it's wet, it so-so works. Um, but I found that even when swimming within a stuff, I can go ahead and just simply, uh, you know, blow on it once and I'll wipe away the water and easily use it without any problems. So anyways, that's just a quick look at the unit itself. On the front, you do have these microphone ports right there um, that manage to allow you to get the audio quality in. It's, it's again, very impressive. It works really well. Um, I did a bunch of swimming with it. In fact, if you look at my post from last week on swimming uh, and the video from last week on swimming, I'll link to it above there. Um, that was actually all shot on the Gar Garmin Verb Ultra. Um, so there is that. Let's talk about size comparisons here. So I'm gonna move all this junk out of the way. Uh, sticker, sorry, it's gotta go. Mounts. And really had to go. Um, 
all this stuff. There we go. That's all out of the way. And we have the verb ultra, and we have the verb XXE, the exact same shell. Um, now you can see from the exterior size here, uh, these are pretty darn similar actually, um, when you talk about full on waterproofing, just sort of like the GoPro was. So if I go ahead and put this GoPro, this is a Hero 4 Silver. Keep in mind the Hero 4 Silver and the black are identical in terms of exterior size. Only the silver has that touch screen, whereas the black does not. So if I go ahead and lock this in place, um, this was you know, a little bit thinner on the width side of it, um, about the same in terms of depth, uh, maybe a little bit, a tiny bit thinner depth wise. Um, but you know, compared to this, this was just sort of a, a more awkward uh, shape to work with. This is kind of streamlined a bit. This is still, I guess, a little bit bigger than the, the GoPro, uh, but we're talking a little, almost nothing really. It's not really uh, perceivable. The button sort of sticks out the same width this does right there. So you're not really looking at all that much difference there. Let's look at weight though. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the scale here. Uh, sorry for the blue light, maybe a bit tough to see on the camera. So the GoPro Hero 4 in the case with the, um, the plastic or the squishy door that you can use underwater, you can't go super deep with this, but you can at least kind of interact with the screen behind the scenes, uh, fully waterproof anyways. That there weighs in at 140 grams. Um, we look at the new Garmin Verb Ultra, that comes in at 157. And then we look here at uh, 151. Um, now, this would weigh a little bit more if I put the fully waterproof door on as opposed to the one that you can just use for, uh, you know. So here is, so here is a fully waterproof door that goes down super deep just to give you a weight idea there. So 143, a tiny bit more. Um, you're talking less than 10 grams difference here. It's, it's really not that big of a deal, um, but there is a, a small difference there. Um, next, if we go and pop these out of the case here, we'll see that you know they're virtually identical. Like it's crazy how small they are um, in terms of differences and design. So again, lots of stuff on the table. Here are the two cameras side by side. You'll see the GoPro or the Verb is just like maybe two millimeters higher in, in height, you know, if that, maybe a millimeter, I and mean, it's, it's almost nothing. Um, when it comes to length, they're identical. They're literally identical. Um, and when it comes to depth this way, however you want to describe that, um, it is, I'd say, identical. You know, maybe if we look at the lens side of it here, um, you'll see that the verb sticks out an extra millimeter, perhaps. Um, again, it's just not going to matter. Um, they're, they're virtually the same. You know, some folks will look at this and say, ah, oh, Garmin copy GoPro and, and whatever. I think if we go back and turn back the clock to cameras in general, once you get to a certain size, and I think this is the size we're talking about, all cameras start to look the same. All little point to shoots look the same. You know, you change the color and the, the exterior case styling, but they're all the same. And DSLRs all start to look the same. Like you get to a point where there's only so much change you can do in this form factor that makes sense. Um, if you look at something like the Sony cams, which are a bit longer and stuff, that's not really a form factor people have really enjoyed. In the grand scheme of things, they haven't sold very well, so that's probably telling. Um, anyways, talk about weight on these to wrap things up here. So get that unit or that scale back on again. So the Garmin by itself, this is the battery inclusive in that, is 87 grams. And the GoPro Hero 4 Silver is 80 grams. Uh, I know from the past that the Hero 4 Black is virtually identical to this in weight. Um, so that's just to kind of give you a... Okay, so that's just a quick look at the new Verb Ultra and how it compares to the GoPro in terms of weight and size, um, as well as, of course, the unboxing itself. Now, I've got a ton more videos that you want to check out, everything from voice control to riding and running with it and all sorts of cool stuff, underwater footage, everything. Um, so I've done a lot of stuff with this camera over the last uh, while, and so I've got kind of a pretty good look at how things work. Also, down below, you'll see a link to my full in-depth review. Uh, you don't want to miss that. That's got a gazillion more details than this video can possibly contain. Seriously, it's the longest single I've ever seen written about the Verb or any other action cameras out there. With that, thanks for watching. Definitely hit that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. There's lots of great stuff coming out over the next week or two and you don't want to miss that. Have a good one.